Cloud Maggie here, the PlayStation Underground's new computer-generated host. I'm supposed to introduce each issue, but as you may or may not know, 3D graphics like me are expensive, so I've been told not to waste any time. All right, Maggie, they probably already know that, so just tell them what's on this issue. Chill out, pushy. I was just introducing myself. Our producer, too many cappuccinos. I heard that. Yeah, well, lighten up. Okay, let's get down to it. First up, we got a chance to sit down with some of Sony's heavy hitters, including Ken Kutaragi, Kaz Hirai, and Phil Harrison, to get the exclusive 411 on the product everyone is saving their arcade quarters for, the next generation of PlayStation. Then, I got to rack up the frequent flyer miles and expand my anime collection as we headed over to the land of the rising sun. We got to check out this year's hot new titles at the Tokyo Game Show and spend some quality time with the creators of Star Ocean and Um Jammer Lammy. That Lammy plays a mean guitar with her riffs and my moves. Talk about your girl power! We also got to spend some time down in sunny Southern California at the video game industry's largest trade show, E3. Check out how our evaluators picks of the show. Well, that's a tiny portion of what we've got crammed into this issue. When you're done trying out the import title, downloading stuff for your memory card, and checking out every nook and cranny of CD1, grab your controller and head over to the vault. The new demos include Final Fantasy VIII, MLB 2000, and Ape Escape, just to name a few. Alright, how was that? Not bad, can you speed it up? Sure, how's this? First, I got to rack up the frequent flyer miles and expand my anime collection as we head over to the land of the rising sun. We got to check out this year's... Hey Buzz, you didn't throw out those CG host resumes, did you? Greetings, I'm the Advocate. And welcome to my look into issue 2 of Volume 3 of PlayStation Underground. Released in June 1999 to subscribers of PlayStation Underground, this two-disc e-mag was absolutely packed with the latest game demos, previews, interviews, behind the scenes and more. It was the first issue to introduce a host, the CG woman in the intro, named Maggie. She'll be showing up more in future issues. Other changes include the removal of the code archive, as PlayStation Underground had decided to move all their cheat codes and tips to a section on their website. Now then, let's get on with it and see what 3.2 has in store for us. We start with the import section. This contains one demo called Sumu. This is a puzzle game that was released only in Japan. The aim of the game is to stack crates in such a way to reveal the picture on them. The catch is you only have a limited number of moves and your movement is restricted. It's a very simple premise, but it gets quite addicting, even if you can't read the text. Later stages can get very difficult, leaning heavily on the challenge of the restricted movement. The demo gives you a handful of stages to try. In the debriefing section, we get a chat with the likes of Kaz Hirai and Phil Harrison about Sony's plans for the next generation PlayStation. Basically, the foundations for the PS2. ...into a superset of music and movies, so that video gaming and computer entertainment becomes a legitimate mass market entertainment. We formed the UG for the next generation of PlayStation immediately after launching PlayStation. So uh, yeah, we uh, started to uh, think about the uh, next architecture for the system uh, in uh, 1995. How do you do that? I think the key word for the next generation PlayStation is emotion. 
How do you convey emotion of the game characters? Realistic facial animation. As you're looking at me now on this camera, you can see that my face moves whilst I talk and as my mouth moves that uh, the muscles stretch. And that's what realism is all about, is being able to get the subtlety of movement into um, the 3D graphics. The new system is going to open up a whole new avenue of creative expression. Today, great games like Gran Turismo and uh, Tekken and Game Day um, are at the pinnacle of their genre on the current platform. But they use relatively simple technology to create that experience. In the next generation of a driving game, for example, on, on the new PlayStation, we will be able to simulate thousands of different elements of what makes a car work. The tire physics, the friction, the fact that it's now snowing, the fact that it's now raining, and that these are having a physically accurate impact on the way that the game handles. This allows for a, a wide variety of gaming experiences to be uh, generated. In the current world of game development, you would use motion capture to um, establish the animation of a character. But going forward, we can now start to physically and biologically simulate how a human being works. And we can use some very complex algorithms called inverse kinematics and dynamics to simulate the entire physical skeleton of a player. Each player uses 10,000 polygons. To put this in context, Game Day and Madden use about 250 polygons per player. But it's also important to remember that beautiful graphical experiences aren't necessarily generated by millions of polygons, but by the best special effects and the most subtle use of lighting, pixels, and texture mapping. It's not all about uh, winning a huge polygonal race, but this is a race of beauty. This demo that we're showing right now um, shows some real powerful uh, lighting and animation techniques called motion blur. Now this um, allows us to track the speed at which an object moves and just like in real life, if I move quickly, there is a persistent blur behind uh, the object. Each one of these firecracker particles uh, is being rendered many times onto the screen. In fact, this demo is being drawn at 60 frames a second, but it's actually being rendered at 600 frames a second. And we can also freeze it like this just like you see in some uh, TV commercials right now where you can spin the camera around and the object is frozen. Once again, there are tremendous creative possibilities with this. If somebody throws a ball in a baseball game or a fast moving car overtakes you or a laser beam from a weapon. These demos give you just some of the hints of the building blocks of uh, where we can go creatively and entertainment wise with the new system. And that's what it's all about. We head now to behind the scenes, where we have two videos. The first being a teaser for Um Jammer Lammy. Katie, Farapa's friend, introduced us. Lammy seemed quiet and reserved at first. People ask where she came from. There are rumors she was born with a guitar in her hand. When she picks up a guitar, she goes wild. There's something in her music that really reaches people. Lammy and I have a relationship. It's a one-sided love affair. I won't say who to whom. I play sad songs about her on my guitar. Her old chip band, Milk Can, has been asked to play clubs across the US. We're considering it. There's a new rock star in town. What's her story? You get it first. Her demo's waiting in the vault. Next issue, footage from her earliest days, reveals a Lammy nobody knows. The other video talks about Star Ocean, the second story, and how much of an ambitious RPG it truly was, since it has over 80 endings. These are too easy. I wanted to make a game as challenging as a traditional old-time RPG, with a deep storyline and complex systems so true RPG fans can really enjoy it. One feature that deepens gameplay is that you can experience the story from two different viewpoints. Play as either Claude or Rena, reluctant heroes who join forces to fight evil.
Another innovative feature is that unlike many RPGs, you can truly control who joins your party. And when you reach town, something unique happens. In a traditional RPG, a group stays together in a town. But this game imitates life where people split up and seek their own thing. The story changes depending on whom you decide to follow. There are over 80 endings in this game. It was hard to stop coming up with more because there are so many ways the characters could come together. Battles have more choices too. You can choose to play them in real time, just like in a fighting game. And a skill system lets you grow each character uniquely. One might become a karate guy, another a swordsman, and another might learn to fight with his bare hands. Several characters' skills can be joined in a link combo. It's fun to discover what a chain reaction is like. There's a great visual effect for every killer move in the game. Each character's emotional level is tracked, and this changes how they think and act. If you choose to have two characters become friends, the death of one in a battle might trigger intense rage and wild new attacks from the other. Other skills also make the gameplay deeper. Choose abilities like composing, cooking, or metallurgy. Then use those skills to create, customize, or find over 1,000 items. When you find a stone or a jewel, it might be useless if you keep it as is. But with your skills, you can make it into something else, like a custom weapon. All these new features give you a freedom that challenges your creativity. One player found a way to finish the whole game with no one else in his party. Another learned to create a tower of people in a fight. This time in the event center, we head over to E399 to see what are the year's exciting new upcoming games. Hey, it's a tough job, but somebody's gotta do it. At E3, the biggest game trade show of the year, we got two evaluators, Chris Cologne and Mark Vitello, to pick what they thought were some of the coolest new titles. Here are just a few of them. If you're a big fan of Japanese anime or giant combat, Omega Boost is the game for you. Omega Boost is a really cool game that was created by the developers of Gran Turismo. Incredible graphics, the gameplay speed is unbelievable. We got 19 diverse stages, true 3D, free roaming environment, so players can attack and be attacked from all directions. You have ground-based missions, you also have missions uh, that take place in space. You have missions where you're actually inside spaceships shooting at enemies. So the gameplay will never repeat itself. It is truly amazing. Burning around town, cops on your butt, that's Driver. The idea behind uh, Driver really was to create a game which is a, um, a simulation or the closest possible simulation to Hollywood car chases and TV shows. Things such as the Dukes of Hazzard, Smokey and the Bandit. One of the things that we really uh, try to make different about this game is that uh, most driving games or racing games taking place on a, on a normal looping track. With Driver you can actually drive anywhere. There's around 30 miles of road in each city. Four-wheel independent suspension. So you can see as you go flying over the hills of San Francisco, all the cars are also leaping off the road. This is the chase that I've just had. Uh, now, it's stored the entire chase, so I can play that chase back like this. I can stop the camera at any time, stop the motion, and then I can insert a camera, and I can choose between various cameras. This year's survival horror has a new name, Dino Crisis. Dino Crisis is looking awesome due to the 3D polygonal background, the amazing CG intro, and all of the other gameplay elements that made Resident Evil series so popular. Some of the things that make the game suspenseful are the way the dinosaurs act like they're hunting you as their prey. They like to play with you, they like to run after your character, they'll stop and stare at you and come at you. At all costs, they're trying to get you. Resident Evil is like a haunted house. Dino Crisis was like a roller coaster, much more in your face, jumping out of windows, smashing through doors. Crash is back in the race of his life with Crash Team Racing. 
Naughty Dog is very excited for the first time in many years to be bringing a totally new engine to the PlayStation for Crash Team Racing, fourth Crash Bandicoot series. It's totally new, one player, two player, three player, four player racing game. You go through over 20 levels, and now for the first time you get to play as Crash, Coco, Cortex, Engine, uh, Tiny Tiger, all of the good guys, all of the bad guys. There are over 13 characters to play as. It's head-to-head -head combat like you've never seen before on the PlayStation. There's more saves for your memory card in the download station. We have saves for Bomberman Fantasy Race, which unlocks all the tracks and characters. Gex 3, which completes the game for you. Ridge Racer Type 4, unlocking all tracks and cars. Two saves for Rival Schools, each corresponding to both discs, unlocking all characters and extras for each disc. And finally, Silent Hill which starts you off with all weapons, except the laser. Next is Research and Development, where we experience Part 5 of Project Wormhole, the ongoing series to show every process of developing a simple game. This part introduces special effects, in this case the missile's smoke trails. We also get a new vehicle model, controller, and enhanced sound effects. We also added some special effects to improve the look of the game. These included some nice looking explosions and weapon effects. Those tiny missiles from the last issue sure were hard to see. So we attached some smoke trails to help them stand out. We use a series of translucent sprites to draw the smoke. A sprite is a two-dimensional image that we create ahead of time in a graphics program on a PC. To make it look like real smoke and fire, it should be translucent. We want to be able to see through it at least a little bit. We use the same thing for the explosion so you can see how it looks. Creating good special effects takes a careful combination of programming and art. In the next section, check out some of the things we created, then preview what will happen in Wormhole Part 6. We also get to play this new version, which now supports analog mode. Next issue, Project Wormhole continues as we look at adding articulated objects to our world. Keep your ideas coming on how to make our minigame great. See what other people are suggesting by visiting www.playstation.com and choosing PlayStation Underground online. Post your own ideas there or mail them to us at this address. Wormhole is a team effort and we want to know what you think. Now we reach the bulletin, where we can find all sorts of miscellaneous info, such as online information, player comments, secret codes for previous issues, merchandise, and more.
Hey, you enjoying this video so far? We're about to move on to disc 2, where we'll find the playable demos. But real quick, if you'd like to support this channel, you can click the join button down there to show your support with as little as one buck a month. You'll get your name in these videos, as well as access to exclusive members only posts. Pay a little more, and you'll be able to see my videos a week early, as well as gain access to an exclusive group in the Discord. Not to mention there's plenty of other benefits. Okay, on to disc 2. <laughs> The first demo on here is for Um Jamma Lammy, a spin-off to Parappa the Rapper, which we saw in Volume 1's third issue. The gameplay is similar, although you're playing a guitar rather than rapping. A new feature for this game is the multiplayer, allowing two players to perform co-op or verses. This particular demo gives you the first level in single-player mode. <laughs> Next up is a demo for Air Guys, Square's 3D fighting game. As this game was developed by Dream Factory, it borrows gameplay elements from their Tobol series. But as it was published by Squaresoft, that means characters from Final Fantasy VII can be played too. The main mode is your standard one-on-one -on -one beat em up, with the gimmick being the characters are allowed full 360 degrees movement in the arena. Another big mode the game offers is called Quest Mode, which plays more like an action RPG. It has characters go into a dungeon with randomly generated floors, allowing them to build up their stats. The characters also need to keep an eye on their hunger in the dungeon.
Oh, here we go. The demo for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. The first game in the popular Pro Skater series. This is where it all started. The control scheme, the arcade-like skateboarding game where you pull off tricks to score points, it's all here. Improve your character's attributes by getting a high score, collecting hidden objects, and completing specific objectives before time runs out. Complete trick combos for better points, but watch you don't bail. The demo lets you play as either Tony Hawk or Bob Burnquist on the first level. Moving on to the demo for Soul of the Samurai, also known as Ronin Blade in Europe. This is a hack and slash as you control one of two characters as they travel Japan and take on a number of bosses infected with what the game calls Soul Bugs, transforming them into horrific monsters. The game was released to mixed reviews, with the game being compared to Tenchu. The demo starts you off at the beginning of the game.
Here's another big one, the demo for Final Fantasy VIII. Gameplay overall is similar to VII, which we saw on Volume 1's Issue 2. However, the graphics have been improved somewhat, with more realistic character models and the removal of magic points. The plot this time involves a sorceress named Idea, seizing control of a military state, so a group of mercenaries led by Squall Leonhardt go on a quest to stop her. 8 did just as well with critics as 7 did, making it yet another excellent RPG game for any enthusiast to have in their collection.
Yep, here's a demo for Ape Escape. The first in a series, the game is about apes becoming intelligent through the use of an experimental helmet. These apes are causing havoc across time and space, so it's your job to capture the apes with the aid of special gadgets. This game is special in that it was the first PS1 game that required the use of both analog sticks. The left stick moves the player, and the right stick is used for attacking. Ape Escape was met with critical acclaim for its originality and cleverly crafted controls. He got a remake for the PSP. The demo gives you two whole levels to run through. If you want more street sports, here's the demo for 3 Extreme. Use a skateboard, roller skates and bicycles to reach the goal for your opponents can in this game. Unlike the previous games in the series, 3 Extreme goes full 3D. Not only are you racing against your opponents, you're also doing tricks to earn points which can be spent like a currency on upgrades for your equipment. Reviews at release were pretty poor mostly due to the gameplay being pretty much identical to the previous games in the series. Not even the 3D engine could save it. The demo gives you a single race to try.
Now for the final demo of the disc, MLB 2000. Officially sponsored by Major League Baseball, this game includes all the teams from the 1999-2000 season. The game did well enough with critics, however it was overshadowed by EA's Triple Play 2000.
Lastly, here's footage from the Tokyo Game Show, Japan's version of E3. You forget about the alphas section? Here we see footage for upcoming games. This time it's Jet Motor 3. It is so fast. New track, new bike, more speed, Jet Moto 3. It will knock you on your end. That's the end of another amazing issue of PlayStation Underground. With no shortage of demos, videos and other goodies, this is the perfect way to experience some of that 1999 PlayStation nostalgia. But hey, if you still want more, subscribe and check out my channel where you'll find more underground coverage, as well as videos on plenty other PlayStation demo discs. We've got a Discord you can join in the description, and if you'd like to support this channel further, click that join button down there and become a member for as little as a dollar a month. I'm the Advocate. Reminding you that Maggie is not real. She can't harm you. Or do anything else to you. <laughs>